Release the mosquitoes! Negative air pressure draws the smell of the bait into the cage, and the mosquitoes fly into the tube with the most attractive scent. Oh my god, they're all coming into my tube. That's amazing. It's, it's like a feeding frenzy. The CO2 drew an offer on this one. It was just absolutely a butt kicking. And that is, of course, Dr. Jennifer Gardy. We always knew she was attractive, and it's nice to see that even mosquitoes agree. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Gardy, of course, uh, her show Myth or Science is part of the nature of things, and it's an exploration, Jennifer, of some of these myths that come up in the world, yep. these commonalities of cures and yeah, all kinds you know, of stuff. Yeah, you know, things that our parents tell us, that their grandparents told them, stuff we hear about in the media, just kind of like folk wisdom around the human body. And, and the mosquitoes plays into that really well, I mean, yeah. as we were seeing it. And tell us about what you're investigating with the skeeters. With the mosquitoes, uh, there's a sort of commonly held belief that uh, women are more attractive to mosquitoes than men. But That's Fiona I and I were just girls. saying that, you know, it could be other things as well, you know. See, I was, like I was just telling you, I always thought it was blood type. Blood type, yeah, yeah you know, people have ascribed Diet. A diet, yeah. You, are you wearing perfume or not? So people have always said there's all these different things that sort of influence your attractiveness. But, you know, gender was one of the, the big commonly held beliefs. So we set out to figure out, you know, is it true? Are women really more attractive to mosquitoes than men? And uh, you'll have to watch the show yeah. to find out. <laughs> but suffice to say, you know, in, in the clip that we just saw, the mosquitoes loved me, but I was soundly rejected by them in a later experiment. It was yeah. actually Aww. kind of disappointing. Now, what were you yeah, what you're saying? Saying? You're like, <laughs> Tell us what we were looking at. In the clip. We were sticking our hands into uh, something called an olfactometer, uh, which is basically a, a centimeter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. the stink machine, the Stinkomatic 3000. Uh, <laughs> and it's essentially like a mosquito choice experiment. So the mosquitoes are, they're in a, a big box with a little door. And then when you separate the door, uh, they have the choice of accessing two tubes. And in each tube, you put anything you want to test. And it's basically seeing what the mosquitoes prefer. So you could put, you know, like cheese in one and a pickle in the other and see like, <laughs> mosquitoes like pickles. A man's pickles. arm, a woman's arm, those kind of things. Yeah. Exactly. How much fun did you have doing this? I mean, because we've known you for quite a while and, and I think anyone with a, a background in science, you have to have this natural inclination towards investigation That's and wanting true. to get an empirical answer to yeah. your questions. Yeah, you know what? It's fun to discover things. I think all of us that are in the sciences got into it because we just love the thrill of, you know, being the first person to find something out and go like, hey, that's cool. Nobody ever knew this thing before, and I just found it out. So anybody that's got that innate curiosity, uh, you really do start to question the things around you. You know, yeah. if you see a study in the media that says, you know, eating grilled red meat increases your risk of certain types of cancer. And you guys cover that. We yeah. cover that one. You know, you start to think like, hmm. Yeah. Now, in the nature of things, all of us grew up on it here. It's what piqued a lot of people's interest in science. What was the pressure on you <laughs> to be on the nature of things? Because this is the <laughs> biggest oh, yeah. compliment ever for someone who is a scientist. No pressure. Oh, my gosh. You know, it was always sort of my, my dream to host a nature of things episode at some point in my science journalism career. Yeah. I'd started out on science TV doing a, a CBC show that was a spinoff of the nature of things. Yeah. So we'd be working on our show, which was called Project X and David Suzuki would be doing Nature of Things stuff next door, and I'd be kind of like looking over <laughs> longingly like... <laughs> over the fence, look at what he gets to play <laughs> with. <laughs> He's got the best toys. Exactly, and the best hair, and the, the best the sort of soft <laughs> narration voice. I just sort of would look over longingly. And then last year, uh, they asked me to do a little bit of hosting for a documentary that had already been made. They just needed somebody to kind of come in and do the little intros, the Suzuki yeah. bits, basically. And they liked my work on Project X. So they said, come back. And then about a year later, I got a call saying, hey, we're putting this myth or science documentary together. This time we need a host for the whole episode to you know, walk people on their journey. We think you'd be good at it. Will you do it? And away you go. How and much? You, were, you signed up to this. You're like, absolutely. And then you're yeah. all over the place because the guys that are working on this, I mean, you were in Florida for the mosquitoes. I mean, you're all over the world. Yeah, we did stuff. it all in three weeks, too. We wow. just, it was uh, director, Jeff Semple, he calls it guerrilla filmmaking. And we've 
basically you you go know, in. get on the plane, bam, do the shoot, get out. Like every single flight we took in that shoot, we were running to the airport for. Uh, did you have crazy. a favorite uh, that you shot throughout? I mean, something that really sort of surprised you? I'm sure I hate it when people <laughs> ask us questions like that, but I know you were brave enough to be in a bikini in this to talk about temperature. And you cool. know, I think... I think my favorite and least favorite part of the show at the same time was uh, the myths around cold. We do two of them in the show, so yeah. we shot for two days. You don't the, like the cold that much. I don't like but the cold. But didn't one involve <laughs> vodka? Vancouver girl. One involved vodka. I see, that would be my favorite. That's that called was a mitigating good. factor. I that believe. was good. That was my reward. The does first alcohol day, warm you up? Does alcohol warm you up on a cold day? The day before, though, we had to test, um, do you lose all your body heat through your head, or is it just a function of the fact that generally the rest of us is covered, hopefully, yeah. uh, and our head is the one thing that's right. left unexposed. So to do that, I basically had to get chilled over the entire surface of my body, which meant being dunked in a, a cold water tank. It was 14 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Oh, that's cool. Uh, full body, like oh, water over my head, a little snorkel and mask and everything. This and is not fun. It was disgusting. Yeah. It's cold, and you're, you're weighted down so you don't float in the tank. You have to stay there for five minutes. So you're in a harness, you're weighted down, you're in this freezing cold Breathe tub, it. and your whole body is saying like get me but out Jennifer, of here. For science. It's for all for science. science. Well, for Jennifer, science. congrats on the it's show. It made show. me Thank want you. more. We'll answer yep. those questions you've always wondered. You can check out Dr. Jennifer Gardy's Myth or Science on the Nature of Things tonight at 8 o'clock on CBC, and then it will re-air Thursday, December 1st at 10 o'clock on CBC News World. Do not drink alcohol to ward <laughs> off the cold until you know whether that is a scientifically viable way to ward off the cold. Oh, what am I talking about? Drink anyway. You'll be warm. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Jennifer. We're going to take a break. When we come back.